بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي ونسلم على رسول الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد وإنه في أم الكتاب لدينا لعلي حكيم and verily it is the mother of the book with us exalted and full of wisdom so explaining the high stature and status of the quran amongst the host which are the farishtas the angels so that the people on earth will respect the quran obey it venerate it and fulfill the haqq of it. So Quran has been called Ali, the exalted. So whatever a person can fathom to mean exalted, the Quran is beyond our comprehension to the highest degree of Ali exalted. Exalt the book to be exalted. Regard the book to be regarded. Raise this book to be raised. So make an intention when making tilawat of Quran, like how the Quran is elevated and exalted, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should elevate and exalt me as well. As it Maimun bin Mahran, you say, من تبع القرآن قاده القرآن whoever obeys the Quran Quran will pilot him it will steer him حتى يلبيه في الجنة until it leads him to جنة ومن ترق القرآن and whoever leaves and abandons the Quran then the Qur'an will continue يتبعه. it will follow him حتى to extend that it will fling him into Jahannam so Qur'an is a solution to every problem as Abdul Ibn Masood رضي الله عنه used to say إن هذا القرآن مأدبة الله فمن دخل فيه فهو آمن The Quran is the banquet of Allah Whoever enters he is protected فمن استطاع أن يتعلم منه شيئا فليفعل And whatever you can learn try to dedicate your time to the Quran and uh, a house which has the Quran is void of any a house that does not have the Quran is void of blessings and the shayateen frequent this house here so so that's the power of the Quran la aliyun hakim علماء ابن كثير استفسير as mentioned وإنه شولي the Quran في أم الكتاب is in the mother of the book meaning uh, the lawhe mahfuz which is the opinion of uh, Mujahid and Ibn Abbas the preserved tablet لدينا with us in our presence لعلي indeed exalted meaning occupying a position of honor and virtue as Qatada has stated la'aliyun position of honor and virtue and hakim full of wisdom yani clear with no confusion or deviation so this indicates to the status and the virtue of the Quran like elsewhere it is mentioned innahu la Quranun kareem في كتاب مكنون is indeed the honorable recitation in a well-guarded book كلا إنها تذكرة فمن شاء ذكرة it is 
an admonition and whoever wants let him pay attention to it and it is uh, its records are held in honor exalted purified in the hands of the scribes the farishtas who are kiram barara honorable and obedient Alama Kurtubi has mentioned uh, an interesting point La Ali a Rafi'un a Yanal it is so elevated and it's so exalted that uh, it cannot be changed and Hakim Mahfuz min Nuqs o Taghir it is protected from any flaws or changes Alama Baghawi has mentioned also an interesting point that uh, from uh, Katada يُخْبِرُ أَنْ مَنْزِلَتِهِ وَالشَّرَفِي It's informing us of uh, its status, its honor. إِنْ كَذَّبْتُمْ بِالْقُرْآنِ أَهْلَ مَكَّةِ Oh people of Mecca, if you deny the Qur'an, then no problem فَإِنَّهُ عِنْدَنَا لَعَلِي رَفِيِ الشَّرِيفِ Because according to us it is honorable, it is noble, it is elevated. And whatever you think about it does not change its status. Whatever you consider the Qur'an to be, it will not change its status one but. So Qur'an will elevate one in dunya and in akhirat. And uh, unlike the dunya, which it will degrade a person and disgrace a person also. So in the dunya, a person thinks so, uh, he's got it covered, he's got all, ang all angles covered and he strives and he struggles for his dunya to sort out matters of dunya, whether it is what is security, his safety, his financial security, etc. But dunya at the end of the day stabs you in the back, unlike Deen, unlike Qur'an. Like there was a, a wedding rehearsal taking place and, and the groom after that took the menace to one side and said, you know what, I'll give you a hundred dollars, just change my wedding vows. So uh, the, the minister was listening and said, when you reach the part where it states, I promise to love you, honor you, obey you, and forsaking all others to be faithful to you forever, um, that part leave it out, that part leave it out. So the minister said, okay, done deal, he took the hundred dollars. Now the cinema ceremony uh, started the real ceremony and now it came to the vows. So he started uh, stating, will you promise to obey her every command and wish, serve her breakfast in bed every morning and swear that you will never look at another woman? So the groom was petrified, he was horrified and uh, he looked with big eyes at the minister. The minister came close to the groom and he told him, uh, groom told him, I thought we had a deal, I thought we had a deal. So uh, the minister whispered in his ears, yes, we did have a deal. But then he pushed a hundred dollars into the groom's hand and said, but the bride made me a better offer. The bride made me a better offer. So dunya is full of deception, is full of doka. Shaitan is the master con man as well. And uh, sometimes even when it is good for a person, they, they, they stay away from it, they hide away from it. It's like when Tashkil is made in Jamaat and a person is told, give your name for life, who's ready for life? People don't love their hands because they're scared. If they love their hands, this is a mocha, the opportunity of Kabul, yeah, acceptance. Then we'll have to give our whole life for Allah. We still need to enjoy life. So, Mahatani also used to explain that uh, some people fear becoming pious, fear to become a muttaqi. Why? Because he lose out on the worldly pleasures. So, as a Tani used to say, make an intention 
that uh, you don't want to become pious. But for the sake of Allah, just spend some time with the ulama, the ahlullah, the mashaik, the ulama rabbaniyin, the ulama haq, and uh, understand deen, the barakat and the blessings of this company and this uh, sahabat, is a person who will not go through any difficulty and hardship in becoming pious. Why? Because the mall is the environment, is the nur of Quran and hadith, and a person will build up this interest to practice on deen, and you will experience such joy and pleasure that you will forget about the pleasures of this world. So Ali Quran elevates, doesn't matter how, what, when, even if a person has ex external deficiencies, there's no limit, there's no yardstick to elevation. Abu Al-Qasim Shatubi was a great Imam and he was brought up, uh, born in the town of Shatba in Spain, 538 Hijri, but he was born blind, he was born blind, but Allah had given him such a powerful memory that uh, he became a master and expert in the science of Qira'a and Tajweed, he was also a Hafiz of the Quran and a Hafiz of Hadith, and people used to correct the copies of Bukhari and Muslim from his memory. He was also a master in Arabic Lughat grammar and uh, he had many, many students and uh, he was very particular, he should not talk unnecessarily. He was always in, in, in Wudu, in Tahara, he had uh, a khas quality, special quality of humility, devotion, concentration and uh, he used to discourage his students from studying anything else besides the funun of deen, the science of Qur'an, etc. And his famous kitab, Shatbiya, which is a tajweed in, uh, kitab in Qira, is, is, is very intricate and uh, in, in, in poetic form. And his uh, terminologies, his phraseologies, the symbols which he used is unique. But uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given qabuliya to this compilation. And uh, when he completed the, the kitab, he took it along with him and he made 12,000 tawafs around the Baytullah. And after completing, he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asked for Qabuliya. And then he seen Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam in a dream, he made ziyarah. And the Nabi of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam made dua for the acceptance of his book. So we have vision, but we blind. He was blind, but Allah had given him vision. So the eyes of the heart and uh, what what vision do we have? Uh, what 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 basir that he had to make twelve thousand tawafs? So uh, that's all to do what Abuliya. Until today, we take in his name. And, uh, people who study Qira'at, the Qur'an as well, we see that uh, this is a very important, pertinent kitab. So Qur'an will elevate you. So uh, there's a poem about the Qur'an. They say, they lie on the table side by side, the noble Qur'an and the TV guide. One is well used and cherished with pride, not the Qur'an, but the TV guide. One is used daily to help folks decide, not the Qur'an, but the TV guide. So they open the book in which they confide, no, not the Qur'an, but the TV guide. The word of Allah is seldom read, maybe a verse before they fall into bed exhausted and sleepy and tired as can be, not from reading the Qur'an, but from watching the TV. So then back to the table, side by side, lie the noble Qur'an and the TV guide. No time for prayer, no time for the word, the plan of worship is rarely heard, but forgiveness of sin so full and free is found in the Qur'an and not on TV. So the azmat, the adab of the Qur'an, you respect the Qur'an, you will be respected, it's a Ali elevated 
if you want to be elevated. Uthman Ghazi was a poor person, he lived in a village and he was very hospitable. The villagers didn't like him to, 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 to give refuge to the travelers and, and, and host them. So uh, they decided to evict him from the village. So he went to the home of his sheikh and uh, he told his sheikh what had happened. So he told him, okay, just spend the night here, then we'll decide. He was exhausted, he went to lie down and after lying down he noticed the copy of the Quran on the wall and his face, has, uh, his feet had been facing the Quran. He wasn't learned. But again, adab is something which is part of the heart. Oh, he realized his mistake. He went to the Quran and he stood like this for the entire night asking Allah to forgive him for his mistake. Oh, life, I've dis disrespected your book. I stretched my feet to the Quran. Please forgive me. And uh, then he, he carried on his normal routine when he met his sheikh. He said, Uthman, glad tidings to you. The Quran had sought intercession for you in the court of Allah last night. It was accepted. The command has been issued that you will be a ruler and so to your offspring. They couldn't understand it. I've been evicted. I don't even have a place to stay. And he's even talking about my offspring. So uh, he expressed his a bewilderment to his sheikh and anyway he greeted his sheikh and left as he, as he was walking uh, 12 horsemen saw him and uh, they had a dispute amongst them and they said the first person that we see will make him our leader so they gave him a horse and uh, whatever he required and they made him the amir the leader and then they came to a village and uh, there there was a uh, a, 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 a persecution, another ruler was persecuting people. So uh, they sought refuge. So he said, okay, no problem. You need to pay me a cost and you will come under our protection. So slowly, slowly, every town they went, they, they uh, increased the, the scope as well as his army. People started joining him and from area to another area. So there was a Roman king at the time, he was a Christian. And uh, when he heard of the strength uh, of uh, Uthman and the amount of people and amount of protection, people are protected by him, then uh, he made him his commander in chief. And then the Roman king passed away and Uthman took the post. So you elevate this book and you will be elevated. Same incident uh, of Hazrat uh, Maulana Badri Alam Rahmatullah Ali. He was a great scholar of Hadith who passed away in Medina Tul Manawara in uh, buried in Jannah Tul Baqi. And uh, on three separate occasions, in periods of six months, the authorities dug his cover and they found on each occasion that his body was perfectly intact. It had not decomposed in the least, but and it was fresh, just like it was buried. Even the, the coffin, the shroud, were not disintegrated. So uh, his son inquired, Malan Aftab Alam, he said, uh, my father had one unique quality, that despite being a great scholar himself, he would never stretch his feet towards children who are hufad of Qur'an. He would say, just as inappropriate to stretch one feet in the direction of the Qur'an, it would be disrespectful to stretch one's feet towards a person who bears the Qur'an within his chest. And it is the barakat of such respect that Allah SWT caused his body to remain intact. So uh, this is a book of honor for those who honor it to be honored. So Qur'an is clear to spell out the halal and haram is clear. The black is black and the white is white. It's, it's all clear. It's detailed. There's no ambiguity of what is permissible and impermissible. The question is, are we white in the light with amal or black 
in the darkness with sin. So the choice is us. We are given this opportunity. We, 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 the Quran is clear. The Hadith is clear. It's, it's up to us. We've got everything we need or we've got nothing if we don't practice. It's like the, a, a, a mother's reflections uh, to the child and, and, and she's, she's, she's addressing the child. I gave birth to you but cannot love life for you. I can teach you things but I cannot make you learn. I can give you directions but I cannot be there to lead you. I can allow you freedom but, can, but I cannot account for it. I can teach you right from wrong but I cannot always decide for you. I can buy you beautiful clothing but I cannot make you beautiful inside. I can offer you advice but I cannot accept it for you. I can give you love but I cannot force it upon you. I can teach you to share but I cannot make you unselfish. I can teach you respect but I cannot force you to show honor. I can advise you about friends but cannot choose them for you. I can tell you the facts of life but I can't build your reputation. I can warn you about drugs but I can't prevent you from using them. I can tell you about the lofty stages in the year after but I can't achieve them for you. I can teach you about Dean, but I can't force you to practice. I can warn you about sins, but I cannot make you moral. I can love you with unconditional love all my life and I will with love your mother. So. We've got it in front of us, it's clear. The choice is ours. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the fiqh of making amal. The amal for today is to read salah in Masjid al Nabawi is virtuous. So a person in those Mubarak places should never ever uh, tr try to never ever miss salah in Masjid al Haram, Makkah al Mukarramah, in Masjid al Nabawi. Salatun fi masjid hadha khayrun min alfi salatin fi masiwahu. A single salah in my masjid is better than a thousand salah. Other than that, illa al masjid al haram. Except masjid al haram. Wa akhiru dawana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.